Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Trent. This is Rams Talk coming at you after a very, very long hiatus. It's good to be back two days away from kickoff. Yeah, TGIF to everyone out there. Uh, I missed y'all. I miss y'all, but I just had crazy life stuff, good stuff, just crazy stuff. Um, and I want to give a quick shout out to uh, other Rams YouTubers out there. Since I've been since I've been out of the game, I've collaborated with a couple, and I'm just really happy to see the Rams community growing on YouTube. So if you haven't checked out Rams House, Rams House TV, Payo Time, Jake Ellenbogen, uh, Rams Showcase, uh, check them out. You'll get tons of Rams content out there. But yeah, the, the juices are flowing. You can also find me on all the social channels of Ram, LA Rams Talk, Real LA Rams Talk. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm just I'm pumped. It's just it's just hitting me after the Thursday night game. It really just hit me that football is here. It's real. These games count. Super stoked. Um, also, want to give a shout out to a couple Bears fans, friends of mine, Rick Serio. He enjoys Celery and James Badkey, uh, both big uh, Bears fans. Good guys. And I'll just tell you, Bears fans are passionate. Now, this is my I want to say my fourth Bears game preview. I mean, we played them. You know, for the last years in a row, last four years in a row, and Bears fans are passionate. So I, I'm pretty sure there are some Bears fans watching this right now. So be cool. That's all I'm asking. Just be cool. Um, it's an exciting time for the Bears. I mean, yeah, you got Andy Dalton, but I mean, Justin Fields waiting in the wings. So that's exciting times for you. But um, all time record, Bears hold the all time record 54, 38, and 3. So there's a chance for the Rams to get one win closer uh, in that all-time record. Um, and speaking of all-time, Rams rocking the modern throwback. So, you know, I didn't drop any videos about the the, the uniforms. I'm just going to say this real quickly at the top here. I feel like, you know, that's why Baskin Robbins exists, right? Because who wants to just go in and have chocolate or vanilla? You want 31 flavors. And I look at the Rams. They have all different kinds of bone, royal, modern throwback, all kinds of combinations, old school stuff. So like, you know, it's, it's there to just give fans options of cool stuff to wear. So personally, I like the modern throwback. I wish they were wearing it more this year, but what can you do? Now, this is also the first game at SoFi with people in it, like a real actual game that should be filled up. So if you're going to the Rams game, I envy you. That should be pretty epic. So um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you're going. And after the game, when I have a game recap, then um, yeah, then we can talk about it more there and just what the vibe was. I want to hear. You know, I'm living through you uh, in this game. And you know, the Rams coming to this game at seven and a half point favorites. I think that's right. You know, even though the last three games have been close. You know, go back to that like, freezing game with Jared Goff when he melted down, 15 to six Bears win. Then uh, the year after that, 17 to seven Rams win. Then last year, 24 to 10. Now I think the, this game will be, you know, it's not going to be a, a super high scoring affair, but I think the Rams win this game. I think they actually cover because you know, even though and I can rattle off all these stats about last year, this guy was great at this and that guy was great at that, and this is the stats of the total defense. Yada yada yada, but these these are new teams, new coordinators, and uh, new players, new schemes. First game, I think for the Rams, always you know it's knocking the rust off in that first game because no one played in the preseason, which I totally agree with. But you really just don't know now. I, what it all comes down to for me is that the Rams have a better offense than the Bears. They have a better defense than the Bears. They have a better quarterback than the Bears. And there's no way Andy Dalton is beating the Rams. So I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say that, Bears fans. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, I'm biased because I'm a Rams fan, but I'm also pretty objective, like I, I would tell you. Um, but, I mean, honestly, you know with Andy Dalton that, you know, it's tough. It's tough sledding. Last year when... When the Bears came in and played the Rams at SoFi and you had Nick Foles, you know, Bears, you guys were pretty confident. You were coming off, I think, a couple wins, um, kind of, I don't know, were you, were you melting down, actually? Hard to say, but I think that really put, that was the nail in the coffin for you guys last year. Even though you made the playoffs, um, the Rams defense really brought in, you know, Nick Foles didn't have a chance. So, you know, the at the end of the day, the Rams are a superior team now when Justin Fields is on the field uh, later this year, next year, the year after that, you know, then I think the Bears are more of a legit team. 
And I don't think I'm saying anything you don't know. That's why I'm sure Bears fans, you're hoping that Justin Fields plays. I'm actually hoping Justin Fields plays because I think that would be more exciting. Um, and, you know, he might. He might get a couple uh, reps on the field, a change of pace. But at the end of the day, the, the Rams are a better team all the way around. All the way around. And you'll see as I get to it now. I look at this game as, you know, a lot of matchups, you know, like I said, going into the season, so many unknowns, right? You know, whether it's um, the new, you know, Brian Allen at center, the, the running back combination, Matthew Stafford, um, you know, our defense without John Johnson and Michael Brockers and a new defensive coordinator, um, different, you know, new coordinators all around. Uh, and you just, you know, not having played any preseason games. So it's the first real time the seems playing together. And, you know, it, there just are a lot of unknowns. I remember coming into last season, you know, Brandon Staley, you know, brings a completely new defensive scheme. It's a shortened COVID offseason. So not that much time to install that, but look what happened. So, you know, things and usually take about, you know, two or three games unfold. I remember in 2018, the Rams played the, the um, Raiders in the opening game. And the first half, they were very sluggish. But in the second half, they totally pulled away. So... I kind of feel like that'll be the deal, but in a way, I, I also feel like the Rams are ready for this. Um, now, my my big matchups that I'm really thinking about, especially on the Rams side of the ball, uh, and it starts with Brian Allen at center. Now, I haven't talked about this. Uh, I've been meaning to. I've had a I've been thinking about it a lot, but it's not just Brian Allen at center. It's Brian Allen versus Akeem Hicks, and you know, it, it, the last impression we have of Brian Allen was not a good one. Now, things change. People change. Um, people, players improve or, you know, or they don't. And so we we will find out. I mean, this is a baptism by fire for Brian Allen. I think him starting at center is, I honestly believe, more of an indictment of Bobby Evans not being that good um, than Brian Allen maybe being the best. So I think this is really just the best collective of five offensive linemen putting Brian Allen there instead of having Corbett at center and Bobby Evans at right guard. So Brian Allen, I mean, we're going to know right away if he's getting pushed around. And I remember in that game where the Rams lost 15-6 to at Soldier Field when it was frozen in 2018. And that's when really John Sullivan looked his age. That was kind of the beginning of the end for John Sullivan. He was getting, and Akeem Hicks at that time was on top of his game. That was Vic Fangio time. That was a number one defense. But uh, John Sullivan was getting steamrolled by Akeem Hicks. So uh, I know Akeem Hicks has had a, a down year. In fact, the entire Bears defense last year had a down year, but um, I expect him to bounce back and be a little better this year and give Brian Allen a, a handful. Um, and then staying with that with that side, I think you know the, the offensive line for the Rams as a whole, opening lanes for Daryl Henderson and Sonny Michelle. Now, Daryl Henderson, this is his time. This is his third year, and the job is his, with Sonny Michelle sprinkled in there. You know, we hear about him being on a pitch count. But, I mean, Daryl Henderson, number one, he has to get through this game healthy. And um, when he's played and he's been healthy, he's been good. So I think Daryl Henderson can bring it. And I think it's going to be on the offensive lineman opening holes. So he's going to hit that second that second level of the linebackers, Roquan Smith coming at you. So I'm really interested to see how the Rams utilize the running game this year with, with basically their – their second running back and third running back. I would, you know, like if Cam Akers was healthy, right? So um, I think I'm really happy about this combination. I'm really happy that we got Sonny Michelle uh, in light of all the injuries that have happened around the NFL, especially in the Ravens. Right now, don't you, I mean, like the Ravens wish they could have gotten Sonny Michelle. So, um, you know, that's, that's I'm really interested to see that. Now, of course, on the offensive side, it really comes down. You know, I'm, I, I'm interested to see Deshaun Jackson and Tutu Atwell, but I mean Matthew Stafford. I mean this is this is the ultimate key to the to the, to the game, and um, you know I think he just has such a, he's such a good ball player that he's not going to have that much trouble figuring things out. Um, but I really am interested to see how the Rams uh, throw and and really stretch the field. And how Stafford stretches the field and uses Tutu. Maybe he even uses Van Jefferson or some of the other receivers, uh, Deshaun Jackson, stretching the field. Now, last year, he was he, he Matthew Stafford averaged 6.8 completed air yards per, per completion. 
and with nine intended air yards. So basically on average, he was throwing the ball nine yards and completing it 6.8 yards in the air. Compared to Goff, 4.8 yard uh, completed air yards and average completed air yards and 6.5 intended air yards. So Jared Goff was throwing the ball on average 6.5 yards down the field, Stafford nine yards, completing it at 4.8 yards and Stafford at 6.8 yards. So Stafford does push the ball down the field. We all know this, but I want to see it, right? So like, will will they take a deep shot? I mean, my like, I guess my dream scenario is like first play of the game for the Rams play action bomb. You know, like that would be just sweet. And, and it would be really interesting to see the Rams stretch the field. And when we get to the Bears secondary, we'll talk about this a little bit more. But the last thing for the Rams on offense that I'm really looking at is red zone efficiency. So last year... The Rams were 19th in converting uh, within the red zone for touchdowns at 58%. Now, the Detroit Lions, the Detroit Lions were 9th at 66%. And that's because of Matthew Stafford. So you put Matthew Stafford on the Rams offense, and you know, the Rams red zone offense really just hasn't been great. That's kind of been the Achilles heel of Sean McVay in the last couple of years. And so I'm really interested to see how they convert in the red zone against the Bears and see if uh, this is the beginning of a positive trend. Now, moving to the sec- to the defensive side of the ball and the Bears' offense, um, David Long Jr., or whoever the third, the nickelback is going to be, David Long Jr., Terrell Burgess, um, I'm really interested to see this matchup because obviously you're going to have Jalen Ramsey make a matchup on Allen Robinson, depending on, I think Jalen Ramsey is going to move around. You have Darius Williams perhaps then on either Allen Robinson or Mooney. Um, but who's the third option for the Bears? Is it Marquise Goodwin? Is it Demir Bird? Is it Cole Komet? Is it Jimmy Graham? I think the fight for that third spot is really open. I have a feeling it's going to be one of the tight ends, Komet or Jimmy Graham. So then it's David Long or Terrell Burgess on Jimmy Graham or Cole Komet. I don't really like that matchup because they're small compared to the big tight ends. So now is that more of an inside linebacker? situation with Kenny Young, Troy Reader, or Ernest Jones, um, Trayvon Howard. So how are the Rams going to match up their linebackers on or their defenders on the tight ends for the Bears? Because they have two pretty good ones. Um, but also, you know, is the, we're going to find out snap counts. Is this David Long's position? Uh, are they going to rotate him in? How many snaps is he going to get compared to Terrell Burgess? Because, um, you know, David Long... I thought he was a great pick out of Michigan, but I really haven't seen enough, and so this is his shot as well. Now, the Bears O-line, I think we all know this. I mean, you know, they got Jason Peters. He's old like Whitworth, but Whitworth is better at this stage of his career. Uh, but you have Mustafa, Whitehair, Daniels, and Effetti rounding that out. I think the interior line is is open business and open, and open season for Aaron Donald, Sebastian Joseph Day. Ashawn Robinson is... I think questionable. I'm not sure where how he's trending right now, but uh, you know the Rams' defensive line I think is pretty solid, and you know I, I think the offensive line that's going to be trouble for the Bears. I don't think they're going to run the ball that much um, on the Rams, and then the, going to the Bears' secondary. Now they lost Kyle Fuller last year uh, or coming into the season, which I think actually downgrades their secondary. Their secondary is worse off. They do have Jalen Johnson, who's pretty good. Um, they do have Eddie Jackson, who's really good at safety, but you know it's those other it's the other cornerback position with Kin- Kindle Vildor. Yes, Kindle Vildor. He's a fifth rounder for uh, last year, 2020 draft. Um, and so basically, Kindle Vildor is your second cornerback, right? And so who's he going to match up against the Rams? Then they have Artie Burns and Duke Shelley. So they basically there are three other cornerbacks outside of Jalen Johnson versus the Rams three of the three other receivers. So if, let's say um, Jalen Johnson is on Robert Woods or Van Jefferson, then you have either Robert Woods and Van, or Van Jefferson, Cooper Cup, Deshaun Jackson, Tutu Atwell. Those guys are going against these other, I think, inferior um, cornerbacks, but you never know. Maybe Kendall, Kendall Vildor, this is his coming out party, right? So uh, I wouldn't bet that right now in the first game, but you never know. So I think the Rams should do a pretty good job against the Bears secondary. Also, the Bears on defense have Alec Ogletree and Robert Quinn, two familiar faces. Um, 
But, you know, I think Robert Quinn, healthy, pretty pretty solid player still. Alec Ogletree, kind of, you know, we, we know about Alec Ogletree. Like Alec Ogletree a lot, but, you know, at this stage of his career, I don't think he's terribly effective. Now, the other thing I just want to talk about generally, and, and we can do this another time, but I just want to touch on it, is that, you know, the Bears have a new defensive coordinator, Sean Desai, and he's a Vic Fangio disciple. He's been with the Bears for nine years. He's now the new coordinator, I think, they were, they were Fangio, then they were Chuck Pagano, and then now it's Sean Desai. And I think Sean Desai is going to go more go back to more of that Vic Fangio uh, system that Brandon Staley took from. And so that's really about you know uh, a too high shell, disguising your D, your safeties and your defense pre and post snap. And I think he's going to bring more of that to the Bears this year. Um, and the Rams have been doing it already, and I think the Rams will continue to do it. But the one question I have, the main question I have with Raheem Morris is, and I can get into more of this in detail later, but um, one, the thing that stood out to me the most about Brandon Staley, aside from all the amazing things uh, and concepts he brought to the Rams and his way of thinking, but what his second half adjustments, I feel like every time the Rams got into trouble in the first half, they came out in the second half and they really held it down. Like they tightened it up. He figured it out. He put the players in position to succeed, and they really, they really d- tighten the screws on the on the opponent's offense. So, um, can Raheem Morris do that? And so, I'm curious to know uh, how this how this will play out for the Rams in the secondary or in the defense side with Raheem Morris. Um, yeah, I'm just stoked in general. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna have a live stream on Sunday maybe around 12 noon Pacific time. So that way we can uh, we can finally have a conversation and I can address all the things that have happened in the last two months Rams-wise. Um, it's good to be back. It really is good to be back and talking Rams. Uh, I'm about 17 minutes right now. I'm going to leave it there. But let me know what you think. Uh, who are you? What I guess, what are the matchups you're looking at? Who are you looking at offense and defensive wise in terms of making an impact? One thing that keeps coming up to me, and I think he's going to be sneaky good in this game, is Justin Hollins. No one's talking about Justin Hollins, but I feel like he he made a lot of good plays last year in Kenny Young. So i um, really excited to see what's going on. So yeah, there it is. Rams win, I think at least like a 24 to 10 type of uh, score. I think three touchdowns and a field goal is not out of the question. So, um, yeah, will we see Justin Fields? Who knows? But anyways, uh, I really appreciate you all for watching, for sticking around, for reaching out to me on the many social channels. Sorry, I've been MIA. Um, But like I said, just been crazy with life. Good things, though. And, uh, yeah, as always, go Rams. Like the hat. Oh, I don't have anything to flip.